People are being killed for being black every day in the USA. The police think they are superior. White men on the street think they are superior. And I'm outraged. Here we are. It's June, you guys. We made it. We made it through. It's been uh, almost three months of quarantine. Oh my gosh. It's been pretty, pretty rough, right? How did you guys do with your goals last week? Did you write down your goals last week and did you get them done? That's what I want to know. So I'm Dr. Michelle Gordon. If you didn't know already, here I am. Hi, how you doing? Uh, and thanks for joining in today. And make sure you subscribe to the Menopause Movement Podcast so you're always the first to know when each episode is released. And you can you can subscribe on Apple Podcasts or wherever you get your, you get your podcasts. And thanks for all the five-star reviews. Yeah, the, the podcast has five stars. And I really appreciate all of the reviews from the ladies who listen to it. And if you haven't left a review yet, please take the time to review the podcast. This helps more women to find it and get the help they need during the disruption of menopause. No one should have to go th go through it alone. Uh, and don't forget to share. And if you share, just put it in the, put in the comments that you shared the, uh, this broadcast. <sighs> All right. So don't forget to share. And I want to tell you a couple things today. Today, you know, last week we talked about Memorial Day. It was Memorial Day here in the USA. And uh, good morning, uh, Magnet Mel. Uh, hot, hot in Texas. Summer begins. Yeah. So we talked about Memorial Day last week and how we were starting to see a light at the end of the tunnel as the country slowly reopens, right? Uh, and I was planning on bringing you some really interesting COVID news today because we've seen some newer uh, articles come out about how COVID kills and how it attacks. It's a very interesting virus, but then the USA started to burn and I can't ignore it. I, I can't ignore what is happening here in my country. And for those of you who don't know, George Floyd, an African-American man, was killed by Minneapolis police officer Derek Chauvin on May 25th. And multiple officers witnessed the death, and the entire incident was filmed by onlookers, while this police officer kept his knee on the neck of Mr. Floyd for at least nine minutes, while Mr. Floyd said, among other things, I can't breathe. Now, hi, Terry Lloyd. Welcome. With COVID, the country has been tense. And now we're moving into summer and we can't travel and we're tense We're you know, people are, people are tense, but the problem of race in America, goes back, it goes way back. And the country was built on the backs of people stolen from their homes. And when slavery, slavery was abolished in 1865, there was no infrastructure to support the newly freed slaves. And white supremacy has reigned in the 155 years since slavery was abolished. The atrocities committed against our black brothers and sisters is reprehensible. And I don't know how to talk about this. I don't. I'm white. I have privilege. I don't have to worry about a traffic stop or jogging, as in the case of Ahmed Aubrey, who was murdered by white men while jogging on February 23rd in Georgia. And these are not isolated incidents. People are being killed for being black every day in the USA. The police think they are superior. White men on the street think they are superior. And I'm outraged. I lived in Los Angeles when Rodney King was brutally assaulted by the LAPD. I witnessed the riots when the officers were found not guilty. I understood the OJ verdict. I really was hoping something had changed after Rodney King. I was hoping that we as humans would look to love and look way past the color of our skin. No one should ever feel unsafe because they've been stopped by a police officer. But my black friends live through this every single day. And the biggest issue I see in America is the institutional racism, the insidious racism that comes through the news and the television and other forms of media and our families. I was actually taught by my mother that black people were not safe. I believed this until my best friend Dion came into my life. And I was tenuous and didn't know how to act. 
and she passed away in 2004, but I would love to be having this conversation with her right now. How can we solve this? How can we support our friends who are hurting and have been hurting for generation after generation just because of the color of their skin? How can we be better? We have to look at our beliefs about race. We have to end our privilege. And what if we just had human privilege instead? So remember that if, if we were to end the separation of the races, then white privilege would not exist anymore. And that would be a big change. And Marla says, as you just said, racism is taught. It is. It's taught. How can we support and include everyone? Right? Magnet Mel says, we speak. We speak up. We stand up. Hi, Linda. Hi, Kathy. Kathy says, Tampa is on curfew from 730 till further notice. Hi, Maria. Good to see you. <clears throat> we have to start talking about white privilege. We have to start talking about the whites as a race. We're taught the, the whole institutional racism of America has to go. It, it starts with the, the normalization of, of the way that white people have treated people of color for forever. Right. And how do we, how do we change that? I mean, how, you know, I, I don't have the answers. I don't, but I do know that we have to do something because we can't continue this. We can't continue to have people killed by our police. And uh, I had a conversation with my son yesterday and my son is disabled. And I said, you know, I showed him a picture on the, co the cover of uh, the front page of the New York Times. I said, you know, the U.S. is on fire. And he says, why? And I said, well, I said, a policeman killed a black man, just put his knee on his neck. And his question to me was, why would the police do that? Why indeed? Why, why, why wouldn't they listen to the man who said, I can't breathe? They're going to kill me. I don't have the answers, but we can look at love and gratitude and we can start there. We can start by really paying attention to the fact that we do have privilege as white people in America. And, and maybe I, you know, I can't speak to other countries, but any country that, that comes from any sort of colonial, uh, colonialism, is going to have some some white privilege, you know, South Africa, um, Australia, you know. I mean, America, you know, we attempted genocide on the native people in our country, right? I mean, this is this is this this white supremacy from you know that normalized the 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 European look of humans um, goes way back. It goes way back. How do we how do we change that? How do we change that? You know, I'm a surgeon, and I can tell you that everyone looks the same inside. There's, there's no difference there unless, you know, of course they have some genetic difference where, you know, the, the organs are on the other side, but for the most part, everybody looks the same on the inside, right? So I want to, I want to share my screen. I want to show you something. Um, I'm going to read a, read some comments real quick while I figure this out. Nicole says, thank you for having this discussion, Dr. G. Millie says, um, I can't stop crying as the anxiety is terrible. Millie, I've got two podcasts all about anxiety. So um, go back and watch those. Angela says, it's beyond my understanding how the color of your skin makes one person better than the next. It's absolutely ridiculous and beyond comprehension. I hear you. We are privileged. We don't worry about being pulled over because we are white. We don't need to have racial discussions with our children because they are white. We don't worry about being falsely accused of a crime because of the color of our skin. And yet I spoke to a friend of mine who was going to try to come on the broadcast, but it's probably a little early for him. I spoke to him yesterday and he said that he was going to buy a car for cash. And the person he was working, the, working with to buy the car went away 
And the police came by and said, hey, we've seen you like breaking into cars. And he wasn't. He wasn't breaking into cars or anything. And um, they threw him up against the wall. And if the man that he was working with hadn't come back, who knows what would have happened. And this happens every single day, the suspicion just because of somebody's skin color. And, and you think about it, especially those of us, you know, those of us who are who are older, we think about our, you know, how how even even the television when we were younger, um, you know, basically the whole institutional racism of saying, you know, that that black people were dangerous and suspicious. So but we'll do this. All right. I want every white person in this room who would be happy to be treated as this society in general treats our citizens, our black citizens. If you, as a white person, would be happy to receive the same treatment that our black citizens do in this society, please stand. You didn't understand the directions. If you white folks want to be treated the way blacks are in this society, stand. Nobody's standing here. That says very plainly that you know what's happening. You know you don't want it for you. I want to know why you're so willing to accept it or to allow it to happen for others. That's quite a clip, isn't it? We know it's happening. Why would we allow it for others? And that's kind of where we are, right? That's where we are in. That's where we are. Lorianne says, my heart is very heavy. Yeah. You can follow Jane Elliott on Facebook. Millie Santiago says it's powerful. Yeah, it is. It's super powerful because we know it's happening, but we don't do anything about it. We don't do anything about it because, I don't know, because we're, we're afraid because it's always that way. It's always been that way. Remember, there's, the, you know, when, when something has always been that way, that doesn't mean that it, it's the right way to do something. But who's, who's going to, who's going to stand up here? Who's going to stand up if we don't? There's a really great book that I've just started reading called White Fragility. And it's all about how, White people, whenever we start talking about race, whenever there's any talking about race, there is a lot of defensiveness. And we have this whole thought that racism is bad, and it is, but only bad people are racists. And, you know, we're going to make a lot of mistakes. We are. We, we don't, we're going to be insensitive. We're going to not understand, you know, we don't have to have this, this conversation with our young boys, with our men and our boys, that they have to be careful when the police pull them over, that they have to really not try to incite anything because the police are always looking for something. I have a disabled son who gets into trouble because he doesn't like being told what to do. And he gets himself into all sorts of trouble. If he were not, if he were a man of color, he would probably be in jail in this country. There is such a thing as white privilege. There's also a lot of information on the internet about the history of racism in America. I can really only speak to America, but but anyone that any anywhere where, you know, that was that was that comes from the colonial times, um, you know, and is primarily people of European descent, white people, uh, you know, Canada, Australia, the U.S. Um, I don't I don't know South Africa. South Africa has its own problem with racism. Um, but you can do some homework on this. That's our job, right? Our job is to do the homework and to get educated. It's not our job to go to our, you know, our friends of color and say, Hey, tell me, right? Tell me, tell me what to do. Tell me how to, how to act. Tell me how to get educated on this. That's not our job. That's not their job. Our job is to actually educate ourselves. And most of us are at home and have some extra time for Netflix right? 
And there's a documentary called 13, and it's all about the American prison system. This is going to help you to understand more about racism in, the, in America. And the American prison system exists for profit. It exists for profit. And um, it's really, really frightening what we're doing. And we're, we're just, you know, whole generations are in jail. So in, in a similar fashion, when you want to shape your body, no one can do your push-ups for you. You have to do the work here to gain the knowledge, to fight the systemic oppression of black people in America. Right. Um, I don't know what this is, Kimberly. Are you talking about a book? Um, Maria says that 13 is an awesome documentary. Yeah. Yeah. So what I'd like to do is, you know, I, I want to, I want to talk about how we're going to improve ourselves this week. And I want to really get present. I really want to get present to what we can change in our lives, right? Now, if you're still watching this, you may be wondering, what does this have to do with menopause? <laughs> well, here's the thing. We menopausal women are in positions of influence. We influence our children, our grandchildren, our coworkers, and many others, right? We have the wisdom of a lifetime behind us, and we have to do better. And it's easy for those of us who are not directly affected by this tragedy to not do anything, to not say anything, and to just let this continue. Right? Do you want to be treated that way? Yeah. Would you stand up? Would you stand up in that, in that audience? Right? Who would stand in that audi auditorium when Jane Elliott asked? We all know. We all know what's happening. We know. We know it's there but it's not our problem, right? We know it's there, but it's not happening to us. And the time to fight for justice was way long ago, but now is the time for us to do something, right? What can we do? So it's Monday and it's a special, it's, it, 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 I want, I want to, we always talk about our goals, you know, the three things we're going to do to move our lives forward, right? Uh, but maybe we can do two things that are going to move our lives forward and one thing that we can do to combat racism. You know, maybe you could write those down here in the comments. What are you going to do to help this problem? It's a conversation we have to start having. We have to start having this conversation. And, you know, we've ignored it for so long. I mean, there's, there's many, many problems with the country. There's, there's a lot of things going on. And if, if we don't start talking about this, at the very least, it's just going to stay. It's kind of like the problem with, you know, guns, right? Guns in our country and, and the, the ready availability of guns is, is allowing people to get shot in schools. And, and I don't want to go onto that discussion but it's the same thing. It didn't happen to me, so I'm not going to worry about it. Well, you know, this has been happening forever. This has been happening forever. And when you dehumanize a whole race of people because of the color of their skin, it's, it's what Hitler did, right? How is this any different? I don't know who you are, Facebook user, but you're welcome. If you go to streamyard.com forward slash Facebook, then I can see your name. Lorianne put up her um, goals for this week. She's going to educate herself better, use social media as a tool to show your support. Okay, that's great. Um, what else are you going to do for yourself? Remember, it's um, three things. So what are you going to do for uh, to move your life forward, right? You want to move your life forward. Yeah. Three things you're going to do this week that's going to move you closer to your goal. And how can you educate yourself on race in America or in your country? 
And really, it's okay if you don't know much, but it is your responsibility to look at this issue and see what you can change of yourself and those you influence to make the situation better. Maria says, call people out when they stereotype or joke about other races or ethnicities and don't generalize. We are all individuals. Yeah, you know, it's really interesting. In that book, White Fragility, they talk. she talks quite a bit about, about the, the whole need for individual individuality. That's, that's a very interesting um, point you make. Hey, Sam Palmer, nice to see you. Um, I've always asked why I watch sad shows about history. If we don't educate ourselves, we are destined to repeat it. That's true. Facebook user says prayers and actions work. Well, actions work. You know, you can have a prayer, but if it's not followed up with action, it's just, it's just a thought, right? So we have to, um, without action, it's the same thing, right? A goal without an action is just a dream. And it's the same, same thing. If we, if we do thoughts and prayers and we don't take any action, then we're never, ever, ever going to affect any change. All right. Who else can put their goals up? Anybody else have goals for this week? Things they want to get done? Today's a hard conversation. It was a really hard conversation to um, to have. It was a difficult, difficult thing to write. And you know, it's it, this is this is this is not easy. But we, how can we continue to sit idly by when when people are dying and and nothing is new here? I mean, every other day you hear about a, a somebody who was killed by the police. Angela says, nothing happens without action, right? People never learn from the mistakes they've made in the past, Sam says. I think some people do. I think, you know, I think, I think what we have to learn how to do is to really, is to really get, get present to what we can do. Hi, Vivian. I know I'm, I'm early today. So, uh, I've been on for about a half hour. So today we talked about the racial injustice in America and it is up to us to make a change. Mel says it's up to us to make a change and it's a difficult conversation, but we must have it because if we don't, who will, who's going to have it if we don't talk about it? And, um, you know, I mentioned a book, White Fragility, and I mentioned, and, and that's written by, um, a white woman who teaches racial, racial justice, mostly to corporations. Um, and you know, the, the documentary 13, and then if you want to understand anything about, about race in America, especially, I mean, we've got so every, every piece of information that we need is it is at our fingertips <clears throat> right you know check out the resources that i mentioned here the documentary 13 the book white fragility and you know i'm, I'm gonna try to get get my team to put this up as a podcast so that we have um uh, some show notes and things and now i want to ch shift gears <laughs> so let's see uh let's let's before we shift gears, start by admitting that the problem exists. Yes. So we have to have this conversation and, you know, we haven't been having this conversation. And I think the reason we haven't had this conversation is because we, um, <clears throat> we're conditioned, you know, race, race is, is a social construct, right? We, we, it's a social construct. And, and so if, um, if we don't think as white people that we have a race, right? Because we're raised to just have it be normal, right? It's just the norm. Then we have what we, we, we don't see anything else. We don't see anything else. So Joan says, because we whites are privileged, we need to look for racism in our experience. It is beneath our radar, right? And, um, 
Hi, Michelle. Good to see you here. Um, Nicole says she's going to exercise every day for 60 minutes. She's going to drink two to three liters of water per day. And I would like to do something to make a difference, but I don't know what that might be. So maybe Nicole, the first thing you can do is you can, um, you can start by just educating yourself that that's the first thing, you know, we're going to have very awkward conversations for a while until we really understand race. We don't understand race because we're not taught it. It's, it's, it's our cultural norm to think that we as white people are normal and everyone else is not. So, um, Lorianne says, my fear is that as we enter pride month, more violence will be the result. There's, <clears throat> that's true. You know, we do have, this is pride month and we have, you know, I don't know. I think, I think pride has been canceled in New York, but, um, what's happening in America is you know, people are, are really, um, people, people are really fed up and, you know, we had Martin Luther King, you know, this is back in the sixties, right. And, and this is a human rights issue. This is not, this is, this is, it's human rights and we're not, we're, I, I don't know how to have this conversation. This is, this is what I keep saying, but, but if, if people are treated like not like basic, like humans because of the color of their skin, how, how is that? Okay. How is that? Okay. And how can we educate ourselves so that we can see and, you know, bring up another generation where it won't happen again, where this is not okay. This way of pe people being treated is not okay. That people are people. It is sad. It is sad what's happening, but it's not new. It's been happening. It's been happening since forever, since we started stealing people from their homes and bringing them over in the bottom of ships. Since we, since we tried to kill the entire, you know, indigenous race of America. This is not new. This is white supremacy. And it's insidious and it's our, it's our job to stop it. It's a hard conversation to have. It really is. So to close out today, I just want to say that again, I, I serve women in menopause. That's what I do, right? I help women really make menopause the best time of their lives. And this is not a conversation that, that I thought that I would have to have, but at this, at this time, we, we have to have it. We have to have it. Um, Magnet says, we always have violence in Pride Month, whether this is going on or not. We have a lot of hatred in America, discrimination, racism, social and economic divide. Yes. Um, Maria says, you're right. This is not new. People filming it now. So making more people aware. That's true. But I was in L.A. for Rodney King. Rodney King was filmed on a on a handheld video camcorder with a VHS tape and nothing has changed. People are still getting beat up. You know, cops are wearing, wearing cameras and they're still killing people. All right. There's something else going on here. Maria says, you're doing so well. Thank you. It's hard. It is hard. Yeah. Good morning, Christine Eater. We're having a conversation about race and we're almost done. So please come back and watch the replay. Um, so. Michelle says she's going to work really hard on my anxiety this week due to a lot of stressors happening. Yes, I hear you. And, you know, I've got two podcasts all about anxiety and the menopause movement podcast, Michelle. So, um, I suggest you go and, and, and just take a listen to both of those. One of them is, uh, just a little bit about anxiety and the other one gives you a, um, it gives you, it gives you a kind of a, a tool on how to manage it when, when it comes up. All right. So to close out today, I, I just want to say that we had a real 
we had a blast when we did our beta course on understanding your hormones and managing your menopause. And we had so much fun that we're going to do it again this month, this month of June. And we're going to open up our Facebook group on June 15th. And you can get in on the wait list for that course at bit.ly forward slash beta weight, B-E-T-A-W-A-I-T, B-E-B-I-T, um, B-I-T dot L-Y forward slash beta weight. And if somebody wants to put that in the comments in the group, um, and I'll, Now that's not an application. You'll have to fill out an application to get in uh, because the beta course is by application only, but um, you can get on the wait list to be the first to know when we open up the applications. Millie says we need to change the administration, have people accountable for how they serve the public. Well, I'm not here to really bash the administration because that's institutional. You know, we can only work on, we can only work on ourselves. And so we have to start with us and anyone we influence. That's where we have to start. And once when we do that, when we have to educate ourselves on race and and then kind of go from there. And if there's children in our lives, we have to start educating them so that they don't grow up racist. We don't we don't want I mean we're just because of the color of our skin, it, it doesn't it doesn't make it doesn't mean anything. We are all the same on the inside, I promise you. I promise you. Everyone, everyone has the same anatomy for the most part. So that's what I have for you today. Thanks so much for joining in on this very difficult conversation. And thanks uh, for being a part of the menopause movement. I appreciate you. Now, if you have questions about the topics covered in this or any other podcast, I invite you to open a conversation with me via email at info at menopause .com or on Facebook Messenger through my Facebook page at Dr. Michelle Gordon. That's D-R-M-I-C-H-E-L-L-E-G-O-R-D-O-N. I also want to invite you to join in our next beta group. Here at the Menopause Movement, we are always trying out new methods of teaching and the best ways to get on top of your menopause symptoms. We regularly run beta test groups where we create a learning experience valued at $2,000, but at no cost to you in exchange for feedback and testimonials. To get notified of our next beta group, simply sign up at beta.menopausemovement.com. And thanks so much for being a part of the menopause movement. I appreciate you. Mm -hmm.